Friday GA Flashback Friday. I hope you guys are having a fantastic, magical, wonderful Friday. I know I am for the most part. Um, I've slept okay the last couple of days, and by okay I mean like I've gotten, you know, at least like two or three hours of sleep, which is for me like golden. Golden. I mean, there's days where I don't get that like in a span of like a week. So I get really excited when I get that like overnight. And I think last night was like close to four. So I feel like I could run a marathon because I just like I slept really good last night for me and I slept really good last night for me the night before. So I'm just I'm doing really well so far. Um, which is a good thing because I have to work all weekend and it's going to be chaotic, chaotic and hectic and crazy as normal. So it's really good that I'm running on, like you know, like eight hours of sleep instead of like two. Um, because people at work can always tell when I've slept really well and when I haven't. Because when I haven't, I'm like cranky and weird and delirious. And then when I'm well rested, I'm just crazy and delirious and happy. And so they prefer crazy, delirious and happy because cranky. Rachel is no fun at work. I can tell you that much right now. But we're not here to talk about mood swings at work and sleeping patterns. We are here for GA Flashback Friday where I recap a past episode of Ghost Adventures. And this week we are visiting the Yorktown Hospital in Yorktown, Texas. Now this hospital was a Catholic-based hospital that was built by nuns. Um, and seen over 2,000 deaths in its operation of almost 40 years. It closed in 1988, but was immediately reopened as a drug rehab hospital, and then it closed down again. Um, this place drew, the guys were drawn to this place because of the D word, which is demonic. Um, there are countless reports of attacks. They believe that there's some demonic spirits there, which is very possible. It's a Catholic, you know, it's a religious-based hospital. Um, there's been a double homicide there. There's been, of course, just death because it's a hospital. There's been suicide. It's just it's just one of those perfect locations for like a massive, massive amount of paranormal activity. Um, at the beginning of the episode, Zach gets like the scare of his life. He's such a city boy. He's they're looking for Mike, who is the caretaker of Yorktown Hospital. And while they're looking around the property, it's really quiet. Um, you can't really tell that anybody's even living there. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this donkey comes trucking down the freaking driveway, right? And Zach is, like, just oblivious because he's walking away from it. And Nick is like, gee, behind you. And he turns around and he's like, what the hell is that? What is that? And he runs away and it's a freaking donkey. Okay, first of all, the donkey's not going to hurt you. Um, don't stand behind it. As he learned later on when he tried to grab the donkey's but like you don't do that you don't stand behind a donkey if you've ever been around a farm animal like that horses donkeys you stand behind them they will kick you and it will hurt and you will not like it um and he even made the comment never lunge a donkey's ass true freaking story don't lunge at the donkey the donkey will kick you and you will not be happy um they learn the donkey is a good donkey his name is spirit he lives with mike the caretaker um and if you remember the Aftershocks episode a few months ago, they talked about Yorktown Hospital Spirit, sadly, was killed by someone or something. Um, and that's really sad because Spirit was adorable. Um, and I like horses and donkeys and chickens, oh my. So I was really sad to hear that Spirit was, was dead. Um, but Mike was, you know, telling people, telling Zach about how people get choked because of their tattoos and so on and so forth. And so that, of course, gave Zach an idea for later in the lockdown that we will get to in a minute. Um, speaking of lockdown, they start in the basement where the double homicide took place and where the energy is just really different. It's vastly different in the basement than it is anywhere else in the hospital. Um, the mel meter goes off and they get an EVP that says, you want to play. And they just feel this massive amount of energy so they decide to leave an x cam in the basement um with a digital recorder kind of like on a tripod and they go upstairs to the first floor where zach captures um an apparition with the infrared digital still camera and you can actually see the outline of what looks to be a person and they also use the px device but they don't really get anything um but 
while they're getting all of this evidence upstairs, they're actually catching a lot of EVPs downstairs on the digital recorder that they left in the basement. And they get an unexplained moan, and then they get, it sounds like a woman who's kind of in pain, which one of the people that died in the murder was a woman. Um, and then the other EVP was a full sentence, and it was a Class A EVP. It was amazing, and it said, it must be told, and I'll tell them you did it. And that has to be that they're talking about the murder. And that may be very well two spirits like communicating or a spirit communicating with another spirit, which is always a big question on whether or not they can do that. And I think that this is possible, a possible proof that, it, that they can. Um, they then go to the second floor of the chapel where nuns are said to choke people who have tattoos. And so Zach makes every Zach Bagans fan the happiest girl in the world. Um, by taking off his shirt and showing his tattoos. I know it made me happy because I always enjoy it when Zach takes off his shirt. I don't know about anybody else, but this girl right here, one, I mean, I have tattoos, so she really wouldn't, you know, like me either. This is three of ten right here. Three of ten right there. Um, and they're on my arm because they're my three favorites. Um, but yeah, so she wouldn't like me either, but I have a soft spot. I like tattoos. I think that they're, you know, when you, there is a fine line of, you know, when you have them all over your face and you have them like in your lip and on your neck and, you know, in your eyeball, like that's weird to me. Like it's not weird, but like to each their own, but I just, I'm not attracted to that. But like when you have them, you know, like on your body and your arms, it's fine. You know, I, I'm completely down with that. Um. So Zach decides to take off his shirt and, you know, have every have the nuns see his tattoos. And they get a response out of him for sure. They get on the PX, they get um, Suffer and Jesus, which obviously would be um, significant with where they were at. They want him to suffer because he has tattoos and he must be needing Jesus because he has tattoos. Um, they then get an EVP that says it's sick. So that may be her very blunt um feeling on his tattoos so they get they get a response out of them he does zach doesn't get choked but he does they do get a response out of a spirit who obviously is not a fan of his ink just saying um they then go down to the nuns quarters and do a burst evp session where they get a response that says don't go in the bathroom so of course zach goes in the bathroom because you know that's Zach. um and he gets a couple of responses there. This was like the episode of EVPs. This episode was EVP downloaded. Like, it was absolutely insane. And that's what I liked about it because I always like getting, like, when they get a lot of EVPs or they get a lot of response with the PX device because that's the spirits talking. That is your way of hearing them. And that is insane because it's always nice to be able to hear that it's not like the same sound coming through any, like through the digital recorder. There's different frequencies, different tones, different spirits, different people. And it's just a really interesting phenomenon to me like being able to talk through white noise or being able to capture a spirit voice through something as simple as a digital recorder is amazing to me it always has been always will be um they end lockdown by sending poor Aaron into the basement by himself of course and Zach and Nick stay upstairs with the thermal cam and Aaron gets some EVPs in the basement um and he also has the PX device with him he gets on the PX he gets hurry and hide and metal and he gets an EVP that says the killer is coming get to the hallway and this was all after he heard like metal pipes rattling around like something was coming toward him he got really uneasy and was like I don't think I should be in here no dude I don't think you should be in there either um something's coming and I don't think it's good and so just being able to pick up on those feelings he left and that's where they kind of ended lockdown um Overall, this episode is insane. Like, this hospital is no joke. I mean, hospitals are usually no joke anyway just because, by nature, they have a lot of activity because of the history of their environment. Um, but Yorktown is a special breed. I think that it's... It's built on holy ground, and that gives the darker energy ammo because they always like to fight with evil. And while there's good there, and while there's, you know, there is, you know, good spirits and good energy, there's also a boatload of negative energy, and that makes for a really, really active location. And there is no doubt in my mind that this is one of them, because even though they don't get a lot of physical activity, you don't get movement, you don't, you know, you don't hear a lot of things moving around and banging, 
they have the EVPs and the changes in the environment. And that is just as good of evidence, if not better evidence, than hearing something bang. There's so many reasons that in a hospital like that that something can fall over. Um, you know, it, it broke, it fell apart, it, you know, fell, it, whatever. With an EVP and with changes in the environment like that, there are physical changes that you can see. Those are, that's evidence that you can't, you can't make up. And so it's just amazing to be able to see when they get a lot of activity that way because the spirits are active, they're talking and they want to be heard. And that's awesome because they're not hiding from you. It's like, okay, we'll talk to you. And that always makes me so, so excited. And so that's why I really enjoy this episode. And I enjoy it because of spirit, because I like donkeys and I enjoy it because Zach takes his shirt off. <laughs> Just saying. But that is all I have for GA Flashback Friday. I hope you guys have a fantastic, magical, wonderful weekend. I'm going to go get ready for work. I will see you guys next week. Much love and happiness. 